Someone has you in their guard. And I notice a lot. I play guard all the time. That's my game. And, and I wait for certain things for them to do to be able to break. You know, whenever the posture is broken, that's where all the finishes happen. The chokes, the arm bars, sweeps. But when my posture is straight up, it's very hard for him to get any type of finish. So when, it, when I'm in, in the guard, I always, I usually grip or I can even have my open palms in his hips. And I keep my arms, my elbows, on the side of his thighs. I never bring him in. As soon as I bring him in, that's he's sliding up my body. And he's, it's also easier to break my posture. So I'm right here. And I'm not looking over him. And look how I'm, I'm sitting up. I'm looking over, over my opponent. When he starts to pull me down, I just I lift up a little bit. Look, I lift off my heels right here. Right here. Go ahead, pull me down. And as soon as his hip comes up, it's easy to open that guard. So as soon as I look down at him, I'm looking, and the posture is broken right away. My spine curves. When I'm here like this, it's very hard. And look, when his hip comes off the mat, look how easy it is to break the, break the guard. Very easy. It's hard when he's on the mat. When he lifts up, it's very easy to get the leverage on him. See, he's sitting on the mat. This is a lot harder. When I'm here, he lifts up, look at that, opens right up. So right here, posture, he goes to reach my collar. I sit up, I'm looking over him. I'm always keeping my elbows on the outside of his legs, not on the inside. And right from here, there's the opening, right there. You guys see that okay? It's pretty basic, but it works very well. And the whole key when you're in guard is to make him tired. He's going to try and break you down, break you down. And when he gets tired, that's when I start attacking to open up his legs to get the pass. But I don't want him breaking me down. Right here, this is very bad for me. i got to have my posture the whole time. When I'm here and he's going to reach to grab, I just lift up a little bit. Just like this. And when his hips are up, it's easy to open that guard. You guys see that all right? Great. Holding out, Max. One, two, three. Oh, you backfired on me. <laughs> Mount defense. This is not a full, like, I mean, it is part of the, the full technique, but certain, certain techniques, especially when you're newer, it's understanding, like, the principles of what am I trying to accomplish in order to succeed with my technique, the small little battles you have to win in the beginning. And something very important, every position, side control, back, mount, guard, the relationship of your head and your opponent's head, there, that is super important when it comes to creating leverage or looking for ways to unbalance or even attack. Being, no, being, being uh, mindful of where is my opponent's head the whole time in, instead of just panicking and trying to move. And working from the mount, Man, I wish I speak that good English. <laughs> you, you sorry, just, Jay. Sorry, Jay. I, I got you off. I got you off. That was so, my technique. So my elbows... But I wish I speak that good English. Okay? So we, we talk all the time about the elbows being at our sides. Kind of, John Jacques refers to it as stabbing the knees to make sure he's over my hip. But you notice with the elbows to my side, my collar is basically exposed. And a lot of times the very fundamental mount escape where he holds the collar, and this is what we learned day one, how to escape the mount. But when we're training, it's hard for, our, for us to kind of prep for that because we're always sort of anticipating or reaching for the hand, which is the wrong thing to do. When your elbows are here and his body weight is right over my hip, I'm not saying that I'm encouraging him to grab my collar, but it's important to note as an exercise because my hands are down, a lot of times that's the first thing he's going to do is go for my collar, right there. And you notice, Professor Mark, where his head is. It's outside my shoulder. We can practice this in two, two scenarios. Newer students or people that don't understand jujitsu, when they grab onto the collar, they keep the head directly over your head. 
Lots of people start this way. Whenever the head is directly over the head, over your head, it's an easy bridge and roll. It has no balance. It comes straight up. A lot of times it's important. We cannot stop the grip, but we can exploit it. And it's very important when this hand comes in that I don't just pin this. I don't want to pin it to my neck because there's pressure on my neck already. I have to be mindful of this. When this comes in, I hang off it. Just like we do any choke. I make sure it stays here, but it's not touching my neck. This hand just grabs behind the elbow, but while all this is going on, I'm mindful of where his head is. If his head is directly over my head, bridge and roll, straight away. When he, come, come back up, sorry. When he starts doing it, like a black belt, meaning he's gonna enter into the grip, but his head moves to the outside, the bridge and roll is not functional in this moment. So how do I anticipate and prepare for it? When he starts to enter into his collar grip, I follow his head. And I'm always hanging on this arm in the event the other hand comes over. Now there's no choke. I can defend and get out. If I'm holding that and not really addressing it and he slaps the other side, you guess what, you're gonna get choked. So as a drill, as a simple drill, elbows to the side, they're over your hip, your hands are here. When they enter into the collar grip, align your head with their head and bridge them up. And then block the other arm right away. Secure your posture. Going back to what we just did, the first technique. How do I get strong posture? And then we can practice both. What we just, what Professor Mark just showed, and this, you can go back and forth. Okay, any questions? This is kind of the pathway, getting out of the worst position in jiu-jitsu, one of the worst positions. But it's being disciplined with your arm, if you're disciplined with your arm positioning, then you have vision. You can recognize the threats as they're coming into you and you exploit them and escape, not allow it to get worse and worse and worse. Make sense? Awesome. Let's go. One, two, three. Yeah, we're shot. Oh, when I learned how to get an armbar. No. I train for all of you guys and I never let you guys mount on me get my back and then learn how to get up. I keep training there because if you don't practice every part of your jiu-jitsu, when you need it, you don't have it. That's why when I train somebody lower belts, that I feel comfortable, okay, but I don't tell them, I just let them get my back, <coughs> then I defend and I get out. And you do that hundreds of times. Then when somebody your level better get your back, you're ready for that. But it's important that you practice submission and also defense. You cannot be good at submission and you don't know how to defend the positions, okay? I use a lot of you guys in the high belts to do that. You mount and it's something, oh man, I'm mounting a black belt. Maybe or maybe not. Maybe he's practicing his defense. It is good for you, but it's good for you to defend yourself. You have to play both sides of the coin if you want to get really good. Oh, he tapped me. Don't expect to get a higher belt or get good in jiu if you don't tap. Every tap you do is one step forward. One step forward, not step back. It's one step forward. Now I know what I need to practice more. You understand? That's why when you get tired on one attack, no, you should. It's a step forward. That's when I, my jiu-jitsu actually works, okay? Training people get side control. Defense is a lot harder to learn than submission. And that's what a lot of people avoid to practice. That's why the process is as a you are white belt, you survive. You're good white belt, you still survive. Then you become a blue belt, now you have people that need to survive you, but you still look up a lot of people that you still need to survive. All right? Play both sides. That's all I can tell you to make sure the better you know how to defend, the better you're gonna have your submission. Okay? Good? Every round you start from the mount position. Okay, the lower belt starts on top in the mount. All right? That means good for the black belt. You're gonna be on your back the whole time. <laughs> One, two, three. <clears throat>